Здравствуйте, дорогие коллеги. Меня зовут Мария Юрьевна Копыловская. Я кандидат педагогических наук, доцент иностранных языков и лингводидактики филологического факультета Санкт-Петербургского государственного университета. Вот. И я по роду своей деятельности являюсь координатором магистра теории обучения иностранным языкам и культурная коммуникация. Немножко мешает звук. Пожалуйста, выключите микрофоны лишние. Да? Вот. И хотела сказать, что тема цифровых технологий мне очень близка, что я веду курс элективный, пока элективный курс у нас цифровые технологии в обучении иностранным языкам. И сегодня мы с вами вместе попытаемся ответить на такой важный вопрос вообще, что происходит сейчас в нашем сегодняшнем образовании, в языковом образовании, да, то есть в обучении иностранным языкам. И как нам в этом помогают или, или не помогают цифровые технологии. И я хотела бы представить нашего технического ассистента Полину Александровну Безуглову. Добрый день. Она, да, она нам будет помогать следить за регламентом. Хочу напомнить вам, что у нас очень строгий регламент, да, 10 минут на выступление, поэтому следует сосредоточиться на самых главных моментах, аспектах своего доклада, то есть более какие-то подробные детали наши участники конференции потом смогут прочитать в ваших публикациях замечательных, которые появятся вот после конференции. И, собственно говоря, мы понимаем, что меняющаяся система координат, она нас ко многому обязывает. И сегодня здесь мы видим людей, которые занимаются как практики, как исследователи, и они сегодня готовы поделиться своим опытом и своими изысканиями со всеми теми, кто здесь присутствует. Еще раз напомню вам, что хотелось бы видеть включенные камеры, да, хотелось бы видеть лица, не фотографии там или не записи, поскольку ведется запись этих конференций. И, собственно говоря, соблюдать регламент. За две минуты до окончания вашего доклада Полина Александровна вам напомнит, что нам нужно завершать ваш наш доклад. Вот, если у вас какие-то вопросы появляются, пожалуйста, задавайте их сразу на докладчику время на вопросы 5 минут если вы не успели то всегда есть чат вы можете написать свои вопросы в чат зума и мы помним о том что есть у нас синхронные переводчики которым большое спасибо которые нам помогают вот и если у вас есть желание или возможность или необходимость включить в синхронный перевод у вас значок глобуса до да, который вы можете использовать если у вас какие-то вопросы Скажите, а сколько времени на доклад? Сейчас. 10 минут на доклад. 10 минут доклад, 5 минут на вопросы. Если вопросов больше нет, то тогда давайте мы приступим с вами непосредственно к работе заседания нашей секции. И первый докладчик у нас Владимирова Людмила Павловна, МГИМО МИД России, которая выступит с докладом об обучении иностранным языкам в ВУЗе в период развития цифровых технологий. Давайте мы ее пригласим. Да, добрый день, уважаемые коллеги. Хочется всех поприветствовать и пожелать, пожелать всего хорошего успехов в нашей конференции. Я хотела бы сейчас, прежде чем начать, вот демонстрацию экрана включить. Правильно я делаю или нет? Зеленая кнопочка. Зеленая. Видно мой экран или не видно? So Anna would like to show my presentation. Please switch on slide show or press button F5. Yes, I understood F5. So let's start. And the subject of my report, foreign languages teaching at university during the development of digital technologies. So there are a lot of research in this sphere and it's important to say that we need to continue research this subject. The digital technologies are very important and they're related to the distant learning and we can and we can study this as a form of communication between the participants of learning processes. So what factors are important to pay attention to? Why it's important to pay attention to the learning process organization? First of all, soft program of programs. Some of them were already used, like Google, like Teams, like Zoom. So, and 
also it's important to pay attention to the model of distant learning and the model of integration. So the webinar model, so the model of networking, communication, and etc. It's very important factor is psychological factor. It's important to, to learn. It's important to learn this digital etiquette, how to involve students into activities, how to combine groups, how to make them communicate, how to make them interact. And it's very important to pay attention how to involve them, how to motivate them in this atmosphere and this sphere. So it's very important factor is to make structure, structure of foreign language learning. So for the teachers, it's very important to plan their lesson. So for the remote teaching, and it's very important to take into consideration the specific of the lesson. It's important to plan the tasks, the assignments, which help to build lexical grammar skills speaking and it's important to make these assignments for the face-to-face -face learning also you can suggest a lecture and a demonstration on your screen so it can be a form of chart so also we know that there are such themes like offline online so where all the participants of distant learning can communicate in networking, it can be some kind of chat. And it's not important that all participants are being involved in the group at the same time. So they can select the time which is convenient for them. They can send messages and of course, individual learning, like reading text, like writing assignments using special sources and incent. So I would like to make special focus how to organize your personal work, your self-learning work, how to organize the text, how to make structure of the text. It should be organized in a specific structure in order to actively involve the learner so it should be a special help messages for example on the screen you can see a small sample of the text so and you can see there are some kind of interactive words with the links for example flatland and we can see the description of this word what does it mean it means re region on herberger or the herberger so and it helps to involve students it helps to to give them to provide more time to study this particular word or text. So, and that's how we can increase the interest, the motivation from the learning. So this some kind of interactive exercise. This exercise can be done for the self-learning or can be used for, for the, some internet resources for example here you can see some kind of interactive exercise we give a piece of text with the special terminology or lexic which is needed for the students particular for the learning of this text and that's how we can build the lexical skills and audition and etc where we can find some such kind of interactive exercise but every teacher knows that there are plenty of internet resources for example we as a teachers of the german language we use this particular website you can see this on the screen so there are plenty of video clips and different subject different themes and it's very interesting that here, particularly here, it's very good methodological structure, so which helps to mitigate difficulties, to improve the reading skills, to build vocabulary, because a lot of interactive exercises, variety of them. So, and then here, easy to make a control of speaking skills and then to check the speech. So we know the digital educational technologies, they provides, they makes us 
they force us to change our methodology of teaching to change our way of teaching so but i will not pay attention to this part i just want to underline this is a new system for teachers of pedagogical technologies this like combination of means and methods to improve to achieve the targets of teaching the, so some kind of interaction of all participants of learning process in order to achieve the necessary target. Traditionally, so we believe that pedagogical technologies is in discourse and roles, place, projects, but in this structure, algorithms, I would say algorithms of these activities, of these technologies, it's not very different from the face-to-face -face learning, but remote learning with the digital technologies. So it's a different moment. Here we have to consider and dif differentiate the assignments and type of activities which we can actually provide to the students. So part of them we can assign for the distant learning, some for the face-to-face, -face. for example, some kind of forums, chats, video conferences can be used in the distant learning. And it's, of course, it's very useful. And this we can do and use it in our pedagogical technologies, especially for the project learning and etc. So a lot can be said here, and I can tell a lot about this important moments which we have to pay attention to. But I know I'm short in time, so I have to make my conclusions. So distant learning, it's very important to underline the structure of this learning in order to escape some kind of stress and fear from the learners and to build very effective form of communication. So, and of course, it demands for us some kind of change of the traditional method and of course we need to learn digital method and of course to improve our pedagogical method thank you very much for attention thank you very much thank you for your report and thank you that you're very good in time it's very important for our conference and for speakers so now it's time for questions. So I would like to ask you a question. So because I'm just interested in one moment that you mentioned, because you said, because some assignment can be done for the face-to-face -face form of learning, but some for the remote. So what would you relate to the to the face-to-face -face and for the remote. So remote, I would suggest, let's say some kind of video conference or webinar, so we can use this technology. So on this certain platform, like for example, we do now, where do you now? So for example, so I used Google Meet I have some experience and I would like to say there are quite many opportunities. There are many functions like some alternatives can be switched on for different students. They can discuss in dialogue because, you know, all teachers say it's difficult to make dialogue, but there are some platforms, there are some soft program which have this technical functions well, I can two, three or more people can communicate in a dialogue all together. They can see each other. So that's what I mean. That good digital tools can be very useful for the remote learning. So that's what I mean. So what we can suggest for our distant learning. But I would like to say one more time that it's very important and very useful to keep our face to face to face learning so and yes i agree with you and i would like to tell that it's very interesting to organize the self-learning process 
Yes, we know that's how important it is to keep the student engaged and motivated. So the question is, maybe something is improved during this new pandemic time. So something improved in this sphere. I would say I would answer like this. So because we are, it happened with us like out of the blue, we didn't, we're not really ready for this. We're not really ready. So that's why every teacher achieved something in this digital learning. And what I personally understood, it's very important to involve particular every student to interact all together. And it doesn't matter that we are all remote from each other. So, and it's very good when with two, three, four of them, we just, I just make them in group and they communicate all together. So it helped a lot. We discussed, we argued, we built a dialogue, students made their reports, presentations, and etc. So this method makes to involve, engage all students. And no one is just sitting around and doing nothing. Everyone got involved and worked hard. Oh, now some noises, technical issues, so we can't hear the speaker properly. So, but nevertheless, thank you very much. And today we have a foreign speaker. So, Hello, hello. You. So, uh, uh, Stella, uh, this is the way you prefer to be uh, called and named. Well, so Stella, uh, I will address our Russian audience. So, in Russian, Stella, uh, uh, okay. okay. So, Stella represents the University of Nagoy, and she is going to talk about a psychological aspect. She's going to speak of what Lyudmila Pavlovna has just told us about a student's anxiety when learning English uh, as a foreign language and ways of coping uh, with this anxiety in online and face-to-face -face classes during the pandemic. So this is uh, how the topic is stated in uh, that. So you have the floor, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me share the screen. Okay, so this is the one. Uh, good morning, everyone. So thanks for coming to my presentation. Uh, I'm Stella from Nagoya University of Commerce and Business in Japan. Today, I'm going to talk about my project um, English learners' foreign language anxiety and coping strategies in online and face-to-face -face classes during COVID-19. Okay. So um, as a background, the COVID-19 global pandemic has led to abrupt transition from traditional face-to-face -face education to emergency online education in many countries around the world. Isolation from teachers and peers during emergency online education may intensify foreign language anxiety, FLA, experienced by foreign language learners. My project uh, is under this background and focuses on FLA levels and FLA coping strategies, as well as their relationships in online and face-to-face -face English as a foreign language classes during COVID-19. Um, the participants were 47 undergraduate students who spoke Japanese as a native language. Their average age was uh, 20.82 years old. 
all of them were enrolled in different sections of the same upper intermediate level English as a foreign language course during this project. To measure participants' FLA levels, I used the Japanese version of the foreign language uh, classroom anxiety scale, FLCAS. The original English version of the FLCAS was developed by Horst uh, 1986, and later the Japanese version was developed by Yashima et al. 2009. In the FLCAS, participants rated on a five-point Likert scale for whether they agreed with the statements about their FLA levels or not. Specifically, one indicated strongly disagree and five indicated strongly agree. To record participants' use of FLA coping strategies, I adopted a Japanese version of the FLA self-regulatory strategy scale, uh, FLA SRSS, from the original English version developed by Guo et al. 2018. In the FLA uh, SRSS, participants rated on a five-point Likert scale for whether they agreed, uh, whether the statements about their use of FLA coping strategies were true for them. Specifically, one indicated never or almost never true, and five indicated always or almost always true. Um, regarding the procedure of data collection, participants' FLA levels were measured by the FLCAS six times, with three times in online classes and the other three times in face-to-face -face classes. Then at the end of the semester, participants completed the FLA SRSS to record their use of FLA coping strategies, as well as a background survey. Now let's take a look at the results of the FLA levels as measured by the FLCAS scores. The plot on the left shows participants' uh, FLCAS scores during six times of data collection in online plus face-to-face -face, um, classes. The bold um, black line represents the mean FLCA, uh, FLCAS scores. And as shown in the plot, about half of the participants uh, had low anxiety level uh, which is below 93, and about half um, had medium anxiety levels uh, between 93 and 124, and few of them had high anxiety levels above 124. Um, results of mixed effects modeling showed mode of instruction was a significant predictor of FLCAS scores, specifically participants' uh, FLA levels in online classes were higher than in face-to-face -face classes. Um, next, let's look at the results of the use of FLA coping strategies as measured by FLA SRSS scores. The plot on the left uh, shows participants' FLA SRSS scores um, and um, during the online uh, and face-to-face -face classes. And the bold um, black uh, line represents the mean FLA SRS as a scores of all participants. And the gray lines represent each participant's FLA SRS as scores. As shown in the plot, um, about half of the participants had low use of um, FLA coping strategies, um, which is below 2.4, and about half of them had medium use of FLA coping strategies, that is between 2.4 and 3.5, and few of them had um, high use of uh, FLA coping strategies, 
that's above 3.5. And results of mixed effects modeling showed the category of FLA coping strategies was a significant predictor of FLA SLR SS scores. Specifically, participants had lower use of the avoidance strategies than the cognitive uh, management, effective social and appraisal strategies. Uh, and next, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, and next, uh, lastly, um, let's look at the results of Pearson's correlations between FLA levels and the use of FLA coping strategies. Um, this table shows um, the use of avoidance and effective uh, strategies were positively correlated with um, FLA levels. And that indicated that participants with a higher level uh, of FLA or higher anxiety levels um, were more likely to use the avoidance and effective strategies. Um, okay. So in summary, um, FLA levels were found to be higher in online classes uh, than in face-to-face -face classes. And among six categories of FLA coping strategies, the avoidance strategies uh, was used more, uh, less often than the other five um, coping strategies. And as for the relationship between FLA levels and FLA coping strategies, um, the participants who had a higher FLA levels tend to use avoidance and effective strategies more often. Okay, so that's all for my presentation. Thank you very much. Mm. Thank you very much, Stella. Thank you for your so serious academic approach to the problem. And we, uh, I think everyone in this uh, room noticed uh, how much has been done. And uh, what about the questions in the audience? First of all, I should address our uh, audience. Как у нас вопросы появились какие-то к докладчику? Можем? So, do you have any questions to the speaker? I have a question actually. So as usual, I'm the inquisitive and acquisitive person. Well, so uh, I'm about the strategies. You mentioned uh, that most popular among those who uh, feel this anxiety are avoidance and effective strategies. So uh, what exactly um, is being done by the students when they apply these strategies in life, uh, avoidance and effective strategies um, in particular? Yeah, so for avoidance, one example would be that um, they just try not to um, focus on learning English. So they may, okay, I don't want to uh, do the assignment or they just go out and just kind of <laughs> escape or do not do the work. Um, and then, so probably they will come back when they feel better or happier. And then mm -hmm. and for effective, it would be, um, so they, try to uh, tell themselves, oh, uh, listening to English songs can make me happy. Or uh, if I learn English well, I can talk to my friends and which can be fun, something like that. Um, mm -hmm. So they tell them, oh, if I do it, then I will be happier or like I will have a good time with my friends, something like that, yeah. Mm. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any, okay. any more questions? Mm -hmm. uh, so Stella, thank you very much for your report. And uh, I've got a practical question. So for example, I have a student who obviously um, has chosen the avoidance strategy. And I know that he's very much stressed about the online mode and he prefers to not turn up for lessons. Mm -hmm. uh, so do you think it is possible or is it necessary to some kind of uh, get into interaction with him and try to return him to kind yeah. of influence his strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think actually um, we see that there are six different categories. And um, so actually um, like the students, if they want to use avoidance strategies, that may be because they don't know about other strategies well. 
So uh, we can say, oh, uh, you can use this one sometimes, but there are other better ways for you to get better. So for example, you can use social or management or management, I think that would be um, helpful. So you can learn to plan your time. So you, you will have time to uh, review the exam before it takes place, something like this. Yeah, um, thank I you think, very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, итак, я, наверное, продолжу. И на правах модератора я все-таки отнесла бы свой доклад в конец. Uh, okay, uh, I, will I will postpone my report to the end of our... Uh, and now, uh, Yevdokimova, Elena and Krasilchikova, Marina have the floor. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much. So, give me some time. Can you see now my presentation? No, not yet. Mm -hmm. So, give me some time. So. Now we can see. So, and I bet it to your slideshow. Yes. So, honestly, I thought it would be 15 minutes. So, but now I understand time is much shorter. That's why I need to skip some slides. So, maybe. It takes a couple of minutes more of my presentation, so I just predict you. So my name is Maria Georgievna Yevdakinova. So my co-author Krasilchikova Maria Alexeyevna. On this slide, you can see our beautiful university. So, and you can see a photo of Maria Alexeyevna. So she's a great researcher, and today it's very important for all of us, the new digital technologies, to learn foreign languages. So, and I would like to remind you what does it mean, the means of learning. This is the material object, including our classical lingua didactic, and the implementation of new tools to give us new challenge new questions for our lingua didactic science and first of all theoretical because we have wide experience and practical usage in the foreign language learning process so and at this stage we need to answer scientific questions how the educational environment has been changed with the implementation of digital technologies. So whether we meet new challenges, whether the quality of the foreign language learning will be changed. And based on this empirical data, we can say that there is a significant transformation of the general status of learning in the digital environment. And the new forms of communication, storage, transmission, processing of information, all these will impact the processes of learning a foreign language and teaching a foreign language. And all these transport the subject of the processes, the character and activities and iterations. I would like to underline some general approaches and methodological basis which we can use in research problematic of implementation of new means in foreign language learning. First of all, and the main methodological approach, this is a systematic approach. When we use this approach, then we can see that the character of the system will be significantly transformed. So traditionally, the methodological system can be characterized with the hierarchical links between the elements. In the natural learning, when the higher elements of the higher level structure will determine the lower elements of the system, and this digital system 
of learning can evaluate this system to the horizontal structure. So I, I don't have the slide of this, but I describe this. This is like some kind of movement of these nodes on the axis. So if we imagine this scheme will be flexible and the nodes will be changed and the distances will be changed between them. So some kind of flexible system. So this radically can change the role of teaching. So we give this very different and much more higher status. So it will impact on the system in general and in particular cases. So, and to answer the questions which digitalization set for us, one of the methodological approach is the tactical triangle. So this triangle consists of teacher, content, and learner. So the classical lingua didactic. So again, teacher, learner, and content. So, and you can see how it represented on the image. Here we can see a teacher, we can see a learner, and we can see content. Triangle. So in the forum teacher of mathematics, the teachers notice that this formula doesn't cover all the learning processes and it was important to implement a context in this definition so a cultural factors which can impact the learning process and then in this triangle was emerged in the content and then with the new technologies and uh, growing importance of these technologies, this tactical triangle was converted in this volumed triangle. So you can see this in the image, you can understand what I mean. So, and at the top level of this image, we can see technologies and the nature of this volume triangle, we can see that this is like some kind of transmitters between the teacher and learner and the procedure of analysis, different meaning of content. So the technologies, teacher, teacher, learner, technology. So different links. And this gives opportunity of the detailed description between all of these elements in learning process. Also, we can use this methodology. So on the basis of this axis of triangle in the dynamic, dynamic between the participants of foreign language learning process. And then we can see the results of this analysis first. This is the learner and technologies. So the student, the learner doesn't select the methodology. Methodology is being selected by the teacher and the learner just follow, follows the teacher's recommendations. So, and the content is represented verbally and was presented to the student on the paper. So, and the digital environment provides for the learner free access for the content. So using the technologies, this content becomes more and more available for the student. So, and it's some kind of all elements are important for the whole group. And the next, so, a teacher, content, and technology. The traditional situation, the teacher is the only source of the content. So when he provides an assignment to learner, so in advance, and these sources are restricted, and the teacher already knows what kind of results to expect from the student. 
So this is some kind of facilitator, partner functions, and etc. And the main function of the teacher is some kind of projecting, building the content and involve the student in the learning this content. And the learner here is some kind of researcher. So in order to use this content and to adopt this content. So, and many resources of information are available. So, and the process of learning is a very important and some kind of vague and very unpredictable. So, the next one, teacher, student and technology. When teacher and learner has the direct contact, like face-to-face -face contact and the teacher some kind of ruling the learner. So, and satisfies all the needs of the learner. And the technology is the basis of the environment. So, and teacher and a learner here is a partnership cooperation. I would like to underline that now we have in a transition period. So, when we have new and intermediate forms of teaching. So when we analyze the process of foreign language learning in this triangle concept, then we understand that didactic most to the predicted contact of the teacher. So with the consideration of the learning needs. So, and I would like to remind the research of approach of projecting digital technologies, there is an idea based so to use these technologies should be applied with the consideration with the very changing conditions of the educational environment, because the situation is very dynamic and needs to be flexible. So that's why the significant changes in the system and technologies. So it's very important element as a variety. So the set of elements, tools in the system can be unlimited. You can add many different nodes, links, and even you can build a network. So which makes the system very adaptable, very flexible to any conditions, learning conditions. That's why educational system based on digital technologies can ensure complicated learning processes, can react fast on changes, can use different sources. And to sum it up, I would like to tell, to tell that it's particularity of digital technologies some kind of qualities adaptivity so it can be adjustable to the learner's need and can be personalized so so it can be individual personal learning projecting so including the individual needs and factors of the learner and targets of the learner i hope that i manage to represent my point of view, my methodology, so that this triangle concept is quite fruitful in research of digital learning technologies. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Maria Georgievna. So you're very good in time. So. Thank you, Paulina Alexandrovna. So if anyone has questions, we have time for questions. Yes, there is a question. I have a question. Maria Georgievna, could you please tell your name? Vladimir Ludmila Pavlova. Thank you very much for your presentation. And I have a question. 
I agree that this flexible system, that the systematic approach about that the node, every node can be changed depending on the situation. So my question is, today we have this digital reality, digital environment, which demands changes. Who can change the content? The teacher? So can the teacher change this content of education? So just tell if it's possible how to make it like in narrow context or in general context. context. So if you mean administration situations like we are now, of course, we all have to understand and take into consideration our programs, our directives. So ideology of the higher education and so on. But also we have a lot of freedom at the moment, where we have a lot of opportunities to build our personal courses, our individual assignments, even our learning methodological books, teaching texts. So just we're not really restricted on the context of teaching. So as far as our students, of course, we have to know whom we teach. So the needs of our student. So we know that universities are focused on professions and we have to be oriented on this target. So depending what particular target, but also the target can be changed very easily. For example, the book in the in the pedagogical university in our local pedagogical university, and we had a problem that the current situation. We also have to be very adaptable to the very fast changing conditions and circumstances. So we have taken into consideration all the particular needs for our particular students, and they are very different. Some group needs these particular things, the other specializing on different things. So I think I answer your question that now we are all in situation in a very fast changing environment when we have to react very fast to change, to adapt, to adjust. So as soon as we solve today's task, immediately we get the new ones. Thank you very much. And I agree with you because as far as my experience, every year we have new groups, new students come and we need to change our content and program. Yes, and this is the masterpiece of the teacher he has to, the teacher has to be very fast in changing the program, to be very adaptable according to the needs of the learner, so to create new tasks and assignments related to the talents of the learner. Thank you very much. Yes, let's move to our next speaker. So, thank you, Maria Georgievna. It was very interesting report. And if there are more questions, you can write them on the chat. So on our next speaker, Pavla Valina Kasimova, Moscow State University named Talamanosov, and the topic of what? So uh, the computerized dictionary in political feminisms. You can see uh, the screen share. One second, please. Ah, here we go. Uh, good day, every everyone. 
One of the most uh, re rhetoric uh, means used in political discourse is the use of euphemisms. There is a special group called political euphemisms. Uh, these are words and sentences used to replace some rude or coarse words or expressions in order to cover certain uh, unpleasant uh, sides of political reality. Uh, for example, an example of the use of euphemisms we can see how the word war is replaced by an armed conflict or a, a counter terrorist attack or if peace if peace enforcement etc so uh, uh, when we're analyzing uh, this euphemistic replacement uh, we should understand that there should be no distortion if we remember the classic model of uh, the, the semantic triangle so uh, the nominate uh, may to a large extent be similar to the significant and uh, and the nominate uh, may not correspond to the uh, first of all is adequate nomination uh, in euphemistic uh, replacement uh, this uh, the significant remains the same for example if a word war is changed to an armed conflict it this is the case Second, uh, non-focused uh, nomination, the significant of the nominate are more or less this, a little bit the same. And in this particular context, uh, uh, it, if, for example, we call war uh, uh, enforcement, uh, enforcement to peace, the uh, author of the text sort of disorients uh, the reader. So, for example, if we use the use this expression, the use of force, it can be used both to uh, imply a military operation, a police operation, uh, the narrowing nomination. Uh, here we can use a euphemistic nominant with uh, which is less threatening, and the reader thus may not be able to fully understand. Uh, what is going on? Maybe it's not an anti-terrorist operation. Maybe it's about civil war. And of course, there's also false nomination. If uh, the meaning of the significant uh, is totally different from the euphemistic nominate, thusly, we have a total mis misinformation. For example, if we use uh, uh, the restoration of law and order uh, instead of war, and thusly, uh, it is uh, really difficult for a person studying uh, this or that, learning this or that foreign language. It's very difficult to understand. So uh, uh, there, there, there are very, actually there are few uh, euphemism dictionaries. Uh, there, there is a thesaurus by Newman and Silva. Uh, there is an, also a Russian language euphemism dictionary by Sinichkina. And I didn't manage to find any uh, bilingual uh, euphemism dictionaries. Uh, this uh, is due, I guess, to the changeability of euphemisms in political discourse. And uh, this uh, uh, means that such dictionaries should be constantly upgraded, renewed, and re published once again and reissued. So, uh, uh, again, uh, th this or that interpretation of this or that euphemism depends on the emotional context and an extra linguistic situation. Thus, um, an information about a euphemism should have additional information about the author of the text, his politics, his interests, his uh, linguistic culture, etc. And there isn't any a there isn't a single dictionary which contains all that information. At the same time, uh, modern uh, information technologies allow us to create an information system which which actually facilitate and uh, automate the process uh, of looking for, uh, systemizing, storing, uh, upgrading, and the use of uh, information about political euphemisms. And uh, it, it, is, it is also possible to create uh, bilingual and multilingual dictionaries uh, if we create relational uh, connections between databases uh, and uh, and I can say that this uh, the idea to systemize 
and organize uh, our work with euphemisms is very topical and has a lot of practicality behind it. And uh, the analysis of the specificity of political euphemisms allowed us to come up with a list of requirements. So uh, the di such a dictionary should contain the following information. First of all, the keyword. Many political euphemisms have uh, the same uh, keywords like activity, business, problem, etc. Euphemism, a word or an expression, uh, context. For example, a portion of a text containing the euphemism, uh, there can be several contexts where uh, one word can have one or several meanings. Uh, then the source of the text, the date when uh, this or that euphemism was used in a discourse, uh, the type of an e euphemistic replacement, again, object, uh, an element of political uh, realia, uh, eight, uh, a person who actually used a euphemism. It is important if this or that euphemism was used by a political leader and the translation of a euphemism due to the fact that the real meaning behind the euphemism is uh, uh, in the majority of cases uh, contextual, uh, there may be several variants of, translation, of translating this or that uh, word or expression. So, and there should be the following functions. Uh, uh, one should be able to look through contexts uh, in which this or that euphemism uh, was used. Uh, there should be a translation of euphemisms from English to Russian. There should be a classification of euphemism plus. There should be uh, filtration mechanisms uh, uh, while searching uh, for specific euphemisms. And uh, there should be an option of adding new elements uh, to the system. At the same time, there should be instruments and tools specifically used to uh make uh, reference lists of persons uh events etc there should be a expert input function for supported by msxl uh, and there should also be uh, uh the option of uh, uh protecting the uh, database from uh, unsanctioned and unauthorized use or maluse okay no misuse so this concept was actually created for a digital uh, Russian English uh, euphemism dictionary and uh, basically, but this system can be used for any other dictionary and we can use it to create a multilingual dictionary and at the same time, a, the same approach can be used to uh, make uh, dictionaries for any other, uh, for any other means like metaphors, etc. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, what I wanted to say, uh, uh, the report uh, was very profound, was extremely profound. Uh, it once again proves the trend that uh, which we had during our plenary session, uh, which Olga Kulikova had mentioned. Uh, she said that one of the leading trends now in terms of digital technologies in learnings and linguistics and uh, language didactics, uh, we see that uh, certain technical aspects are merging with uh, uh, specific linguistic information or material which all of us work with. So uh, this is as far as uh, so basically you're taking uh, linguistic matter, language matter, and you're uh, in accord, uh, fo followed by a very specific plan of how to use it, you are basically uh, looking through all the other options and it's, uh, it's really great. Uh, there can be many questions and many questions can arise about the, euth the euphemisms themselves. But however, I don't think that this is the type of conference that we should actually be talking about this. But uh, this idea that uh, when uh, humanities and sciences uh, merge together and unite. This is very interesting. So, uh, qu uh, colleagues, do you have any questions? Maybe not not exactly a question. Uh, maybe like a. Uh, I'm in Harlamica where colleagues. I think that it's uh, a great area of re of research and study. Uh, so maybe maybe you're the one who should actually uh, create create this dictionary. Well, yes, I'm, uh, I've already been working on this dictionary for quite some time. Uh, so, so we can't wait to use it.
Thank you very much. Yes, because uh, you see this, uh, there is a very thin line as far as euphemisms go, as far as we talk about connotations and certain uh, hues of meanings. Uh, we see that uh, even when we're talking about Russian, uh, uh, even, uh, okay, uh, even, uh, okay, connotation is is very something very intellectual, and uh, when teaching, I had to face certain situations when students uh, don't know certain connotations in their native tongue. So, and in such how how are they supposed to work as translations in these situations? Now, what is your attitude towards it? Because certain hues of meanings they can be individual and. Uh, 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 for example, the following generations may not actually know them. What do you think about that? So we should we should be teaching them. We should be teaching them. Uh, yes. So only only uh, only the educational process and the broadening of their reading scope. This is the only way to actually address this matter. Okay. Thank you very much. This was a very interesting report. Let's proceed to the following. Uh, speaker and uh, now we have Makarevich Irina and Makarevich Tatiana from uh, the State University of Belarus as far as I know they have already uh, shared their presentation thank you very much and the presentation is called the theoretical and methodological foundations of a reference dictionary uh, as far as digital transformation as a tool of uh, professional foreign language activities. Thank you very much. So, so please switch off the telephones or any other devices in order not to interrupt our conference. Good afternoon, dear participants of the conference. We would like to present you results of our research so, and it's theoretical methodological foundation of the detection reference book on digital transformation. So the authors of the research has specialized education, which gives them this tools to make this research. So it gives us very deep understanding of the processes in the digital transformation. So this science never will be like a red book. So every su success will bring new question. So every development will result in new difficulties, in new challenges. So and applied dictionary on digital transformation as an instrument, as a tool, so this is a basis for research. So, so this version, which at the study of research, so and the authors of this issue developed the dictionary, Russian English dictionary for the state usage. So one of the perspective direction, which is very well developed and being developed in the world is digitalization and linguistic science using the results of the achievements with the application of optimization can provide methods of teaching and also the new methods and which can be applicable in the world. So, and our developed product. So the target for us is this state managers at the regional and municipal level. So this are languages for the digital transformation, digital economy, 
digital diplomacy. So at the moment we're at the stage of testing and the author is the winners. The only participant of the uh, different content was presented so it was presented to use this method not only in the republic of belarus and to use in other different territories So, and the characteristics, so, so it's very good adjusted for the students' usage. And of course, we develop the methodology based on the research so in development of the dictionary has different stages, like development of the dictionary, systematization of the management competences. So which is in compliance of the state regulations and rules, and also creation of structure according to all the system of linguistics. So, and now the next slide will be a model of the system because the development analysis is of a model so is very important and it's very important for the stage of developing and modeling of information system. So in the building of a model of informational system is important for the diplomatic, poetic discourse. So that's why we apply the context diagram. So during this work at the stage of projection, modeling projection, so it has a system for the realization. So, and here you can see on this slide, you can see the main purposes of modeling, which is accepted for this project. And here you can see a context diagram. You can see the processes. We have reference book, IT books, which where we get the information for our project. Here you can see errors on the top. So about the services analysis of texts and application of different texts. So on the bottom, you can see functional errors. You can see the data processes, the authors who made this processing of data. Also we used for the processing data, the analysis of texts information. We use a, the program, the name of the program you can see on the screen. So and you can see the lists which we used for building our dictionary. So, and we have such kind of terminology, natural dictionary and electronic dictionary. So on this slide, you can see context diagram. You can see the process which were projected you can see this in term of diagram hierarchy. So you can see the system. So how it was researched. The project of linguistic methodology. So we can see the relation between models and between classes and samples. So process of information. And the result, we have the terminology, list of terminology. So, and it was different methods, how to process the texts. 
So in one of the example, one of the sample you can see on this slide and the composition of our system. So this related compositions. So we made some kind of expertise. So we checked the processes of diagrams. So this you can see on the scheme. So like consideration of the specific terminology analysis, text analysis and text relevance. So as a result, we have processed text and the compositions of different level. So we have breakdown on digitalization of the processes. So you can see types of relation, dependencies, associations, and the result is the relation model of relation. So in the result of the book, so the test of new terms, phrases in the existing system. So in order to use it in the terminology, in new terminology system. And one of the tasks of this stage was to enrich terminology for the specific purposes. So, and one of the diagram you can see here represented how it was done. It was done on the rules of thesauruses. So it was based on the determination of the classes. So in relation between classes and samples, in reference to. So on all the stages which we've done, so result in the clear dictionary. And the result, so the result we can represent like a theme dictionary. So and the main results of our research is the following. So the high productivity of the analysis of text text structuring in different subjects so, and the building of the links, algorithm of analysis and terminology of different type of discourse based on the approaches and the opportunities how to solve the integration program. So it, it was analysis done with the programming product rapid minding. So, and text processing. So for the building market for the informational system. So here you can see a model. Thank you very much. Thank you for attention. Maria Yurievna, please, could you switch on your microphone? Uh -huh. Thank very much. Thank you very much for your report. So I was listening and I just forgot to switch on my microphone. Could you please tell us? So it was very complicated. It was very comprehensive understanding. So even we had a text to read, but so much complicated information. But I have a practical question too. So you say your dictionary is a reference book. So could you please describe to us the difference the difference of your dictionary. So tell us the. Thank you very much for your question. So, could you please switch, come back to my presentation? I would like to show because we didn't show everything which we wanted to show. 
So, so the text, why it's reference? Because it's not the questions, the text, it's not, can be not only translated, can be translatable, it can be applied with the references. So, and related this system of electronic lexicology. So, and on the screen you can see, so the application, because the reference of this terminology have following principles. So this is the dictionary. You can see how it's represented. So you can see the competences. Oh, no, no, we cannot see. Please, could you switch on? Because we can't see. But on my screen, it shows like it's switched on. Give me some time. I need to check. So give me some time because I want to show you. I need switched on and then switched off and again switched on. So and our dictionary has analytical information, has tools for translating, has reference to explain the subject, the links to the teams, different definitions in Russian, in language, in English language. So, again, linguistic component, subject component, transcription, translating. So we spent a lot of time for this, but it was very important, it's necessary to represent it, to have it in our dictionary. Because the specialists in communication, they have these needs. And we learned it from their needs, from their responses. And now they can use it. It will be very helpful for them. This tool will be very helpful for these specialists, specialists in communication. So they can use not just a word, they can use this word in practice, how this word works in combinations with different words, in particular context, in particular phrases. So we used a lot of teaching materials, a lot of practical materials, a lot of articles. So some kind of lingma terminology, right? You just, so like some kind of support of lingua text, right? Who uses your dictionary? Yes. So communication specialists, those who need not only translation and explanation, also who needs the cultural knowledge. So, and the main purpose is translation because we have not only basic translation, but also have like modern meaning of the word, modern context, where it's applicable, in what spheres it's, it can be used, who can use it in one particular purposes, in what context, in what functionality. So the top modern, the top used phrases. So some kind of reference information, which is supported for the translation. So it has very applicable usage. Yelena Kasimovna has probably question because she's the founder of the dictionary and publisher has question if you want to tell something please switch on your microphone so it's some kind of terminology yes terminology but for specific usage which is related for the usage in particular context, text, because a lot of database we use. That's why we can say it's specialized dictionary because it includes a lot of new terminology from new spheres. 
new types of economy, let's say behavioral economy, digital transformation world. Legal terminology for the political discourse terminology, economy terminology. So all top spheres for communication. Also, we included definitions and links. Okay, what about your software? Do we need to pay or it's free? So a special software was developed. So and this computer particular has this software. So it was developed in the special programming center. So we integrate this particular dictionary into database of the electronic government. I have a technical question, Polina Alexandrovna. Polina Alexandrovna, it's very unusual image of chart. So could you please pay your attention? It looks quite strange. So it's not clear. Oh, no, 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 because I particularly write to every speaker about the time. I, I read personal messages, not to everyone. Ah, that's why, because I look at the chat and see there is nothing in chat. No, no, because I write to everyone individually. But if people want to write something, because I can't see any messages, so... So chat, if you need to write something, if you have some comments, some ideas, you can use common chat to write. I particularly don't see any questions in our chat, but we do work. I just regulate, I just control time in order to disturb other speakers. Thank you very much, Polina Alexandrovna. And I hope we are in time. And our next speaker, we give a floor to our next speaker. Thank you, thank you. Because, because it was done huge work, this gigantic work, just very impressed. And I hope those who are interested will learn about your publication and we hope that we can have details of your reference book because it's a huge amount of information we're not really able particularly to follow this because we just want simple simple solutions for the complicated questions but your questions are very com complicated so the next speaker Anatevna, Anatevna. So Russian State Humanitarian University, Russian. The subject of report, the didactic of the professional cycle. So the tendencies of didactics of the professional cycle, disciplines online, formation of remote fund of pollution tools. So, colleagues, uh, right now I'm uh, launching the presentation. So, uh, first of all, I would like to begin with saying a few words about uh, the fact that I need to precise uh, the trends because I'm really happy that uh, this conference in its entirety uh, is dedicated to information technologies and uh, we see all the disciplines of the professional cycle. So right now I would like to add uh, to the speeches uh, and reports of the previous uh, colleagues and talk about the digital uh, environment, about the concept of the uh, communicative uh, educational 
environment and also talk about my contribution to uh, remote uh, teaching and education. Right now, let's talk about the system itself. So, uh, first of all, uh, the pandemic uh, caused uh, a great rise in the development of uh, digital education and uh, the organization of the educational process itself. So, uh, first of all, I wanted here, here I wanted to depict the role of educational technologies. We all know them as digital educational technologies, and here I would like to show how the traditional uh, methods of education were modernized and upgraded so uh, first of all i'm going to talk about the digital educational environment and uh, the digital uh, system digital education system if we are talking about innovative methods and pedagogic technologies here the first thing we should mention is uh, hardware uh, and as well as digital educational resources, uh, which are actually the, the foundation uh, for the development of our uh, remote um, educational means. Uh, and talking about the educational uh, network, uh, uh, it is uh, noteworthy that uh, of late, when everyone was basically forced to work remotely, uh, all of our education uh, has has been uh, conducted uh, and organized uh, as a uh, professional educational cluster. So here I'm going to talk about also the management of the educational process. When we're talking about the digital uh, environment, I, I would like to link it to uh, the integrative uh, interaction medium, first of all, uh, between the participants of the educational relations. And these are uh, not only limited to just uh, teachers and students. And, uh, and students, we're also talking about uh, the administrative employees and uh, parents, of course, because uh, all of us perfectly understand that uh, when parents are, parents are also uh, could uh, attend our classes when we had them remotely. And at the same time, we should understand that uh, personal security when choosing this or that product for uh, professional communication was one of the most important uh, fields of uh, the activity of uh, various uh, universities. So as far as modeling of the educational structure itself, uh, here i would like to uh, underline the difference between online education and remote education so when if we are talking about the system which our university developed uh, as far as my area of speech goes uh, this is how we replace the original on four levels uh, for example if we're talking about uh, the uh, remote evaluative fund uh, it's uh, in interactive uh, practical tasks and as far as uh, the beha behavior and functions we're talking about the relations between the teachers and the students they are in the interactions between them so this is exactly the topic i would like to touch upon uh, so uh, So as far now, as far as digital educational materials go, first we should choose uh, the, uh, it was important to choose the uh, means of communication with students and we had to, because we had to replace face-to-face -face classes and we had to uh, replace, we, we also had to organize audio broadcasts of lectures and also video broadcasts of educational uh, presentations uh, in order for students to actually uh, do their home assignments. Uh, uh, then, as far as the organization of educational communication goes, uh, here we we can, uh, first of all, I'll talk about problems. As far as I remember, colleagues uh, haven't yet touched uh, any problems which uh, we face. Uh, uh, issue number one was uh, to ensure the comprehensive character of our educational process. As far as the communication platforms go uh, in our university, we analyzed several communication platforms. So uh, we uh, 
show Zoom for our needs. Uh, I heard the uh, question which uh, had been asked of the previous speaker. So uh, first we bought uh, the version of Zoom which, uh, which didn't actually match our needs. And then uh, our leadership understood that we uh, couldn't work with this. And finally, they decided to buy the full version, which allowed us to work in parallel uh, modes and uh, basically to conduct our classes without any restrictions and limitations. So now, as far as uh, such systems of true comp and Microsoft Teams go, uh, they were a failure. They didn't stand up to the test. So uh, basically, there were only three systems which actually made the cut here. So because they actually um, they, they, they actually um, match the exact needs of our university. And uh, we needed a little bit different technologies than, for example, Skype, uh, those that Skype could offer. So now as far as the terminology goes, uh, during the plenary session yesterday, uh, they used such um, such expression as hybrid education. Here, I would like to uh, underline one thing. I even introduced some changes into the presentation. We have we have this hybrid uh, or basically mixed type of education. First of all, uh, you remember that we had this period. It was uh, last September when. All of us uh, basically went back to work, but uh, we can, we conducted our classes uh, sitting in our actual classrooms uh, uh, in our universities. Uh, and uh, however, some students wanted to attend uh, their classes in a face-to-face -face mode, and then others just handed in their uh, application saying that they didn't want to attend classes, traditional classes, that they wanted to uh, conduct them uh, online or remotely and uh, basically we have these mixed uh, or hybrid uh, classes so basically uh, if we if we're talking about uh, uh, the, the value the evaluation means uh, it means that this uh, basically we have this um, digital educational environment uh, at our university and we uh, uploaded all of our uh, methodic materials there and uh, basically previously uh, it just used to be only a means to fill in uh, the attendance logs etc but now uh, we are using this uh, platform to its fullest and as far as uh, practical uh, actual classes are concerned we uh, conducted them uh, through a dedicated portal which we have and uh, that's how our mixed or hybrid type of education uh, was uh, has been carried out since then. Uh, now, as far as pla communication platforms uh, are concerned, I would like to highlight the following option and draw attention to the following option, which is used for uh, remote and online lectures. First of all, this is uh, the recording of uh, the video recording of this or that video broadcast because. Uh, I think that it was uh, very useful and handy because uh, it enabled me to uh, check the uh, results. Then again, uh, presentation share, document share, uh, and uh, the ability to manage uh, conference participants, etc. Now, as far as uh, texting goes, uh, of course, this is a very uh, handy format, uh, very useful and convenient format because uh, all our students basically, uh, basically all they think about is rating. So, and this is one of the few platforms which actually uh, provided for the desired functions uh, in this respect. So, uh, as far as the benefits go, I would like also to underline such features as the ability to use mobile devices uh, despite the fact that our students have uh, stationary personal computers and tablets they still uh, use uh, their phones a lot and we also uh, we also introduced such a feature uh, to uh, enable them to use their phones when they do certain tasks uh, 
it's not very handy because our profession implies the use of uh, rather massive text, which is not very useful now, as far as the method is, con is concerned. Uh, so I would like to draw your attention to two models here. Okay, so there is this uh, remote educational technology and uh, an online mode. So this is how uh, the informational exchange takes place. So here we can see the differences in these two diagrams. Um, now, as far as the discipline itself goes, these are the digital translational resources, you know, which uh, based on this particular uh, discipline, I uh, started actually developing the uh, remote fund of evaluation means. So we have three groups, each uh, consisting of 30 people. So basically uh, 90 students total. So 90 people, we, they had lectures, then they had, they were split in three groups of three people. Now, as far as uh, attention focus, uh, in terms of tasks, these were remote practical tasks as far as uh, form or this was just a video conference. Now, as uh, as far as then there were um, the development of collective uh, co-presentations, and now as far as components go, uh, there are open online educational resources, text uh, databases, uh, pre-printed archives. I would also draw attention to digital libraries, media galleries, etc. Uh, systems of um, digital resources as well as uh, test and creative tasks. Now, as far as uh, uh, attention focus goes, so basically when you, uh, as far as remote uh, online classes go, uh, this is the constant change of uh, types of activities. And then which is really important is uh, how, how uh, the communication actually happens. Now, as far as the organization of uh, remote, uh, this is uh, our meeting with our rector. This is our Zoom where uh, our uh, class takes place, and that's the exact uh, window of our classroom. And now, as far as digital resources go, we have a certain classification. Uh, I split it in three main groups. Uh, first, uh, digital libraries, basically university libraries. Uh, here we have more like pro professional texts as far as disciplines uh, concerning humanities. Then there is also uh, online versions of uh, francophone radio stations and uh, TV channels. Uh, of course, this is an online format and news uh, archives and, and of course, uh, live uh, French speech. And uh, one of our colleagues actually mentioned this uh, phonetic aspect, and I think that this uh, adding to this or that uh, dic dictionary can be actually uh, attained by means of inviting uh, native speakers. So now, uh, Francophone social networks, first of all, these are uh, social, these social networks, of course, social network platforms. Uh, and uh, uh, I would like to underline that uh, of late, the uh, people have been uh, using these platforms quite a lot of late. And as far as online resources go, uh, and, and they they are a really good uh, motivation in terms of uh, lingua culture. Now, I don't have any time left, please. So let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. Okay, I'll be I'll be brief. So uh, let, let's take a look. Do we have any French teachers here? Yes, of course. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll, 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 you see the, the these are different resources. Okay, we will be able. Okay, you understand. It's really hard to uh, wrap one's head around internet. Internet addresses and links. 
it's difficult to i'm just talking about the classification yes sir okay we have several specialized radio stations and tv channels which are uh, uh, used in native speech of course to study native speech now uh, as far as the uh, saint monde goes uh, it's an educational resource which is actually uh, used to prepare for the qualification exams uh, and there is also the uh, website of the chamber of uh, trade and commerce which uh, our graduates may find useful as well because this is their uh, uh, specialization language so now and there are also these platforms which are aimed for those who uh, learn languages as hobbies so but uh, first of all these are not just chat rooms where everybody talks about whatever they he or she wants uh, these are very very they, they are moderated so uh, thank you very much for your time and your attention uh, if any questions i'm open for them uh, thank you very much this is a very interesting report it's very useful uh, to teachers uh, i just i was afraid it would take too much time uh, i would ask you i would like to ask Pauline alexandra will we be able to look through the presentations afterwards because there are some questions arising and we would like just to delve a bit deeper into them if we have the opportunity you mean the presentations of the speakers yes of course all of these uh, all of these present uh, presentations and all of these reports will be saved and stored securely uh, i have also excuse me for a stupid question uh, uh, do you know when the articles uh, are supposed to be published? Because uh, in my article, uh, I tried to focus more on the remote fund of the evaluative means. So uh, now, as far as uh, article publication goes, I think uh, one should be asking uh, the uh, organizing committee of the conference. I don't have the information you need. Yes, of course. Uh, it's uh, basically we don't have any French teachers here. However, there there is this uh, the interrelation between uh, uh, this uh, digital fund and also the communication technology. So it's, so you are you are you are you are you are naming it the remote fund of evaluative means. So you see the uh, evaluation systems have changed completely and we have uh, automatic correction in certain uh, educational platforms however when you are uh, gathering uh, and collecting all your resource point how are you how what, what is the correlation there uh, basically we have this fund of evaluative means and uh, th this is like an uh, an annex to our uh, uh syllabus of the discipline and uh, so we are basically uh including all the criteria there for exams and for various tasks and also we we include the examples of specific tasks uh, for example if we take specific disciplines for example uh digital translational resources etc etc of course it's of course, I was the person who actually you know, actually was the author of all the specific tasks. So uh, I had to come up with my own exercises and tasks. And of course, uh, uh, during these evaluate in, in terms of these evaluative means, I'm the person who actually presents all these tasks. So in a classroom, we have one format, and of course, they were uh, tailored to this remote and online uh, mode of education because. Uh, on the one hand, we have this sort of individualization of our educational process. On the, on the other hand, uh, this format is still very new uh, to students as well. So I just simply called it the remote fund of evalu evaluative means. Uh, it's, it's basically the same thing because uh, I can't work without any tasks as far as my discipline goes. 
So basically, what is this the, the evaluation system all about? Because uh, okay, I have this uh, score scale, and it's tailored to this uh, European 100 scale, of course. When uh, we had this uh, third standard uh, introduced as well. So each task has its own value, has its own net value. So uh, attendance is like one score, and each each teacher can can put grades for attendance or not. Uh, now, depending on the difficulty of this or that task, in terms of its creativity, uh, the more complex they are, the uh, the more their value is. So, of course, uh, the, the maximum uh, like uh, score is 90-95, like uh, maybe like uh, and 100 only or maybe only seven students uh, have attained this result in the 20 years of my uh, being in profession. So, uh, so, so basically, uh, the system is aimed uh, to create such a situation when students can get the exact score that they used to get in our during our face-to-face -face classes. And now, even in our educational programs and uh, syllabuses, we're not only writing down our uh, educational technologies, we also have a separate item there uh, called remote technologies or online technologies. So it seems I've sort of foreseen it in some way and uh, all of the situation and I simply uh, was able to adjust it uh, a bit and of course when we make something new uh, we should of course comply with the rules and regulations in effect in terms of uh, academic hours in terms of all the other requirements okay thank you thank you very much uh, uh, Ms. Gusiva. Uh, the uh, report was very uh, comprehensive and at the same time very interesting. And I think that your French teaching colleagues will find much to talk about and, dis and uh, much to discuss. Well, as far as I understand, there are, there are mostly English teachers here and there is also one German teacher here. Yes, yes, you're, you're correct, spot on, despite the fact that uh, French is my second language, uh, I am teaching English, so uh, I teach English, so uh, I think that such sources are priceless for any teacher. Well, of course, you understand that right now we are on, uh, on the web and um, it's one it's one thing, one cup of tea to look for something on the, and it's a totally different animal to understand that this is something worthwhile and something which is worth your attention. So there are billions of billions of resources and it's the, our goal to sort of uh, point the direction for the students and show them which resources are worthwhile and which are not worthy. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, and now uh, the, uh, the floor goes to uh, Inna Harlamenka uh, from, the Lom from Lomonosov State, uh, Moscow State University. Uh, and her topic is the experience of conducting a foreign language internet based exam. It's a great topic. Oh, thank you very much. So our next speaker preparing the presentation. So, and last year we had it very interesting. Now we are very interested to listen to you now because this internet exam is specific. Отключите, пожалуйста, демонстрацию. Да, потому что я вышла уже. Could you switch, switch off the demonstration? Нужно остановить просто демонстрацию экрана. So we need to stop demonstration of the screen. So we need some time to prepare for the next speaker. 
меня просто лицензионная версия, поэтому может быть так вот. То есть оно больше, больше слушается меня. Почему-то, хотя должно вас как организаторы. Но мы не имеем к этому управления отношения, потому что демонстрация ну, экрана понимаю. включает каждый участник. Угу. Да, ну, спасибо большое. Я, да, спасибо. Да, все в порядке, спасибо. Потому что у меня отображение другое немножечко. Ага. Спасибо. Ну, Инна Владимировна, мы вас приглашаем. Инна Владимировна, мы invite you, we give you a floor. Thank you very much. So now I have my screen. I can show you my screen. Yes, you are right. Many uh, colleagues, they told us they have some kind of difficulties when they moved remote learning. Of course, there were some difficulties and circumstances. So, and I particularly also contacted exam. So, and we work with students, they are biologists, and we have developed a special exams for them in international forum. So a huge work was done, and we all appeared in a distant learning, and for us, it became very important how to make exam for them. So, and it was four options presented how to conduct the internet exam with the state attestation so and different institutes choose different options and we know that for example the steam state exams they were moved and we as a moscow institute we started we were among the first who started this remote format and moreover we continue to use this distant format so we had to move to this new form so and we have to take this internet exam so let's look at the format of exams so it could be traditional or paper examination we all get used to this when we provide the paper to our learners and the learners are in the room classroom computer format the next format when the students come to our institute and they use our computers some kind of test and exercise and etc. And the next option is electronic option. So and I created some kind of determination. So we used platform model. We have our own platform. So we call this platform like University Without Limits, University Без Границ, and we as the teachers work in this system, we have courses to improve qualification. So the, one of the course is by Terminasova. And we also have this course on our platform, University Without Payments. And I always pay attention to this course because it's a very valuable course. So we work with electronic platform with the remote access and we have the computer format so the learners can come to us or work from their homes and that's why the geography of the students are very wide we have many foreign students and that's why during pandemic time so it, we couldn't combine them all together because it was forbidden so, and as far as for the examination, we have tasks and tests for the closed and open checks. And this idea of computer format, I already had it even before pandemic time, even earlier than pandemic happened. So we had a group of learners and I tried to apply my computer format. And suddenly in March, everything worked closed and then I appeared in the situation when I had to test my approach for a group of 200 students. So, and it was opportunity to test big amount of group simultaneously. Why I pay attention to this? Because many of you are authors of 
books and materials and methodologists like me. And we all knew how it's important and how much it takes time to develop all these examination materials. And that's why if we managed to test all of them simultaneously, it produced time for us and improved results. So the modern students, so they mostly were well equipped with the devices like hand watches and other modern devices. And when they show them examination materials, even if they show them in our classrooms, and for example, we think no one thought of them, I'm sure that these materials are being copied somehow and can be well well spread so that's why for us it's important again to create new materials new tests this is the next important issue when we need to check big volumes and time limit time has limits so and also we know there can be a human factor for example we can confuse something for example confuse plus and minus and calculate correctly but as far as for the computer checking uh this human error can be avoided so everything will be calculated correctly the next so because we work with the state exams so we already have experience how to work with this unified state exam so we have some experience and we know the weaknesses the strengths so, and we know that there are some situations, if they write the correct answer in the wrong table, it will not be taken into consideration. So in computer check, it never happens. And as a result, the trust of the students improved this computer check. So and pandemic times gave us opportunity to check all these approaches, so technical issues. Even everything is very good from our side, but of course we all understand that there are also can be some issues from the organization side, technician side. So it can be internet problems, it can be any type of problems. So the next issue, methodology. So how we create our tests. And when we may two sessions and we made our first conclusions for example first sessions we had not authored materials we just combined and selected different materials and because our students are very smart and you i'm sure you have the same students they're smart what they do they just build text because the line of the text in the research engine and they find this text put it in the Google Translate or any CAD system and simplify life for themselves. So as far as they understand, the text, they can find it and translate it. So we understood that we need our own authored text and materials. And the next problem, psychological problem. And unfortunately, up to now, we can see that some teachers are not ready to trust technology, computers, they have some kind of trust approach, and they believe only paperwork, but it's not like that. All the tasks we created, all the exams done in all parts and writing, speaking, they have tasks with open Answers. And what we find out, we found out a very interesting thing. When we evaluated all the results of our students who passed electronic exams, so and we compared the students of the previous year and the current year, and we found out that the tests formats were done better. So, and I think. This is like a new moment for us as teachers. So this is something, this is like student child. As soon as the student has a new task, 
there, they immediately start to discuss in groups, they immediately start sharing the answers, and we can't find with this, we can't predict this, we can check this. So, the only thing we can stop it, we use authored materials. So, the materials, unique materials, this, which students never find in internet. So, every task is unique and every task they do self independently. So, and because as soon as they have the text, when they're ready with the first part of the text, they immediately share the answers in the charts, in students' charts. So, and we provided the same task and make the limit in time, and then we ask students. And they told us the limits on time. So they decided because they have limit in time, they decided start working immediately on the task instead of searching the answer in internet so writing speaking but at this students find very original method as far as for the writing we've got some kind of similar result why i think because it was quite creative task and they didn't need to discuss them in the groups. Of course, they could use some kind of translators, but they preferred to do it independently. So, but for the speaking, it wasn't the best result. So I think they feel a little bit nervous. That's why the results were not great. So the conclusions, we need authored materials, we need the data of tasks in order to provide every student with the OWIN materials. It means they have to work and work on the materials and always we have to sit in this electronic exams like high school of economy. So we started to do the federal exams since 2015. So, and like we have local exams in blending distance learning. And also we can use it in general purpose. So we have database, the regulations. So in terms of rules and norms, and I have several articles about report and I will be very happy if someone has questions or someone want to connect me and have questions and discuss or comments, I'm always happy on mutual communication and activities. Thank you very much. Questions? Question? I am as a teacher and practitioner and theoretical teacher. So, and I work with Chinese students, I have a question on author materials, because you mentioned that we need author materials, because it's a good tool to avoid like student cheating. So, and I have a question about this author material. So let's say they're students of biology. So I don't think you can particularly create a biological article, article on biology in English language, right? Of course not. I am not a specialist in biology. That's why I'm not able to write a proper uh, article in biology. Of course, I do know terminology. I do know how to teach English in biology, but I'm not a biologist. Of course, you're right. That's why here, we cannot create author materials. What I meant, I meant we take a text of an article, which is have like an article and we work with this article and then we build an exercise assignment. Of course, the text is original because we are not biologists. We, we can't create such kind of test, but what we can do, we can create assignment. 
So this text can be taken from the newspaper, from the particular journal, scientific journal, author, and then we create our own author assignment and as well adaptation. Yes, for example, you can, as a part of our work, make adaptation. Yes, we can do some kind of adaptation, but the text can be original. So particular I love, I love some kind of hybrid practices for international and for the local one. So we particularly took articles, the authentic articles, and we adapted them. So for example, we had 15 groups. So depending on the level, so like from the scratch, from zero and higher, higher and the top level. And what we did, we adapted the articles, the original articles. So that's why I think so the author materials can be anything which has been tapped. It. That's why I raised this question. And I understood your point of view, your position. Thank you very much. Yes, according to our standard, we have to teach with level. So we need to achieve level B2. That's why all materials which we use, B2. Okay, and this is the original text and your own author is time. Very interesting, very deep report because it's very very hard task to prepare all one material especially this new system in this new environment in this fast changing environment it's very complicated and a lot of work had been done so the next speaker tatiana alexandrovna palushko moscow institute of physics and technology so and subject of her report developing of second language preserving competence online implications of the emergency of remote teaching. I'm very happy of this report because it's related to my job as well. Okay, uh, I'm happy to welcome you here. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, can you see me? Okay, so we see your presentation. What about my camera? Yes, yeah, so we can see you. Oh, I just. Well, I just thought, uh, well, I see you, I see you perfectly. So thank you very much. Uh, so colleagues, uh, allow me to proceed uh, with the actual report. So the aim of the goal of the report is to introduce the uh, model of uh, teaching uh, foreign prosody to uh, students of uh, non-linguistic uh, universities. So uh, these, uh, the results of this study were actually published in the ex -Linga uh magazine so first of all we are going to talk about the reasons ex explaining the uh, vulnerable status and position of uh pronunciation teaching we are going to analyze the uh, existing uh opportunities and capabilities of uh, teaching prosody uh, and the ability to satisfy uh, the, the current needs of students. So uh, first of all, I would like, uh, please, uh, next slide. Here I have a plan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next one, next one. Yes. Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, a, a model which is used to uh, breach the gap uh, between uh, prosody teaching and uh, uh, digital tools and i'm going also to present the results of uh, this method so uh, a crisis the crisis situation related to the pandemic which we found uh, ourselves here it uh, presented new uh, challenges in front of us and as far as the un report goes uh, uh, the uh, main goal was to uh, minimize the degradation of the quality of education of learning loss at the same time uh, we uh, the aim was to increase the competitiveness of students okay next slide please so computer assisted pronunciation uh, so basically uh, the process of teaching in a non-linguistic um, university uh, was uh, found itself in a very vulnerable position and somebody deemed it to be secondary and not important and it's sort of a risk of being neglected completely during our pandemic crisis so uh, basically uh, 
this situation uh, boosted the interest to uh, this to solve this problem. And uh, there is this technology called CAPT computer assisted pronunciation teaching, which is the technology to be used. These uh, this soft this kind of software actually uh, proved their effectiveness in terms of teaching pronunciation, etc. However. Uh, all these digital tools were regarded as visually appealing and uh, interactive game-like methods. However, today we have many uh, applications and software uh, used. However, the results, results of their use vary. The results of their use vary. Today, we have at least three approaches to identifying the main principles of education, which are uh, should be kept in mind when uh, developing CAPT technologies. Uh, despite certain variations and differences, all the authors uh, underline uh, the uh, inability of a, a separate uh, application of an individual application to uh, keep, an, keep track of individual uh, things. However, there are certain drawbacks uh, in this respect. And uh, some previous years showed that uh, the CAPT thing was, uh, researchers underlined that uh, the CAPT technology uh, is still, uh, leaves much to be desired. Uh, it, it doesn't uh, normally uh, correspond to the goals of education. It doesn't have a strong uh, theoretical foundation. And uh, and uh, unfortunately, they aimed uh, to uh, reach the level of a, for, of a uh, foreign speaker rather than uh, that of the clarity of and accurateness of pronunciation. So, uh, the, uh, also, the research shows that the effectiveness of uh, CAPT effectiveness so when used to teach prosody uh, means that teachers need to have specialized knowledge and skills in order to interpret uh, the results of the use of this specific type of programs. So, we have just shown that all these technologies cannot offer a ready solution which would uh, actually address the challenges of uh, current times so and they are not an all-in-one solution and they cannot uh, they cannot re fully replace face-to-face -face education uh, in our uh, research uh, here is the model uh, of uh, prosody teaching based on the combination of technologies uh, so uh, the cycle of prosody oriented tasks is integrated in the course of speaking. Uh, uh, the period of, it, of learning was three months. It was uh, it was uh, an online format and there was no uh, control group. So uh, uh, the goal was to choose uh, reliable technologies and we try to use them. Please, next slide. Uh, during uh, the, the diagnostic stage, uh, students actually uh, re, uh, be, uh, got acquainted uh, with uh, certain examples provided by both native speakers and non-native speakers. They, uh, Im they implicitly have uh, gotten acquainted with the goals of education then they also uh, evaluated the uh, prosodic competence prosodic competence of the speakers next slide please uh, during the inter uh, interim uh, stage of education we also introduced an additional uh, uh, stage as uh, creating a uh, digital portfolio which uh, is uh, to provide uh, additional feedback from student to teacher and uh, all the students had uh, a certain had access to this portfolio and uh, they were able to watch their uh, video records uh, then uh, previous slide please 
so and uh, the uh, control stage was uh, self uh, and peer assessment and uh, they were conducting uh, certain researches which uh, should have been uh, correctly formulated in terms of prosody and now we're talking about uh, technical aspects of teaching students and the uh, diagnostics sh uh, showed that students uh, were able to uh, identify uh, the example uh, prosody 100 uh, percent then they, they, we, we were we were able to continuously uh, monitor their progress and uh, students as well they could monitor their progress and do, and due to the fact that we don't have any digital tools uh, providing uh, instant feedback to prosodic modulations, we uh, based our assessments on a specific scale. As we can see here, during our uh, in, uh, intermediate uh, control stage, we so you see we had 40 students 27 students reached the level of uh, an inter, inter, intermediate level of uh, prosody competence mastery and and then uh, the final stage control stage it showed that 90 percent of them reached the desired result we also uh, noted we also we also noted their the positive effects of this uh, process in terms of the students motivation uh, because uh, we were able to shift their focus and draw their attention to some important details in terms of uh, studying prosody uh, we think that uh, teachers should should first should first of all uh, give preference to those technologies which actually to correspond to educational games and goals and not to those technologies which they deem uh pool or most cutting edge etc so uh, the results of our uh research show that uh prosody can actually be taught remotely and online by means of easily available and uh, affordable uh, online uh, tools digital tools and uh, this model can uh, to a certain extent be uh, integrated into other aspects of language teaching uh, in order to ensure its continuity and uh, uninterrupted manner so uh, i would like to finish my speech if you have any questions i'm open for them thank you very much uh, for this report it was very well structured and uh, we see that this is a uh, very uh, it was a it was a great research and uh, I would like uh, now. I will be. I will be talking about uh, specific digital tools. And now, what you did in terms of academic English uh, uh, and uh, English speech. I mean, it's it's very useful. Uh, many uh, adult students or many adult people actually uh, are coming to us for help when they need when they when, when when they need to go to this or that conference and but at the same time uh, they may take part in this or that conference or report or take part in a round table somewhere and thusly they need a uh, proper language in terms of communication and basically when uh, everything uh, was boiled used to be boiled down just to presentation and So a, a, a person uh, used to come to us and tell us uh, to prepare. So uh, the prosody aspect is extremely important and uh, professional English speech is very important. And your analysis of data is very, very impressive. Uh, and I think that such, an, uh, such a study and research in uh, lingua didactics is very, very important. And I think that there will be people who will actually find your results very useful and find uh, th them fruitful because uh, we find ourselves in these situations during our master courses uh, when we are when we see that our uh, master as undergraduates are, are not yet uh, 
do not yet comply with the standards of prosody, etc. So maybe you have many, any, maybe anybody has any questions? Of course, yes, I have a question. Uh, this software, uh, does, it, does it check the student's choices of semantic centers and keywords? Okay. Uh, the thing is that this is not exactly a, an application or program. It's a, an educational model which is used, uh, which is implemented by means of reliable and proven tools. Uh, we, I understood your question. So how was the assessment carried out? The assessment was carried out by me, by a teacher, uh, based on uh, uh, audio audio reception. So, so stresses, uh, phrasal stresses, basic tones, basic tones, elevation and pauses, uh, temporal contrasts and uh, volume con contrasts. So I mean, phrasal, phrasal uh, stresses, you, you, mean, you mean like if there were shifts uh, in stresses, etc. this was all in English. And, and these things in terms of this flowing rhythmic, uh, were they evaluated or assessed in any manner? Or uh, where were you just about all uh, speech accentuation? We were mostly about speech accentuation, first of all, because we, of course, we evaluate, we assessed it and the syntagmatic uh, breakdown, all of this was uh, assessed and evaluated. And as far as intonation goes, it's the way the intonation quantum moves uh, up or down. So tones, not, not scales. No, 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 no. Scales were not, because uh, we, are, we are very limited in terms of uh, our course uh, limits and our academic hours. There are very uh, specific um, time constraints there. Okay, thank you very much for this. Thank you. Very, are there any other questions? Uh, do you have any other questions? If there are no other questions, then I will proceed uh, with uh, my own report here. And here, I would like to say that that my report is part of our joint project and joint effort where I play the role of uh, studying the uh, phonetic competence in terms of uh, oral communication. So there are three of my colleagues who are also participating in this project and uh, they, we're, they're also teaching uh, Chinese students. And the problem uh, that we face is the same. So I think those uh, of, of you who have already taught Chinese students, they, they know what I'm talking about. It's a problem of that they have difficulties of um, understanding and uh, actually um, listening to oral speech, uh, English oral speech. So, and in this case, we decided to optimize and boost the efficiency of uh, this particular uh, uh, teaching direction, educational direction. So here we would like to uh, basically uh, polish all uh, the things and to do some troubleshooting in terms of problems which may emerge later on. We would also like to uh, to basically come up with a list of some possible problems, future problems, and maybe then we will uh, present this uh, project on a high level. Uh, however, I think that this preliminary level is of no less import uh, because uh, the colleagues are, for the most part here, are trying to uh, draw a line and uh, sort of to total uh, what has already been done and uh, to come to a certain bottom line to come to some conclusion. However, I think that we need you know, to be more patient and uh, to allow our our and to allow our uh, say our materials well to mature. The problematics of phonetics. So we all know how important it is, but it's only part of of our speaking of our oral communication. So we we speak lexicology, we speak grammar, we speak phonetics. So, and of course, phonetics 
it's very important like internally and externally is a part of communicating process and also there are a lot of communicative errors in phonetics that's why phonetic competency of xenophones is some kind of pain point so because we walk online we still walk online and we use educational platforms and we walk on platforms skills so this creates for us additional difficulties so we are not always able to to understand these xenophones to distinguish them in the speech so and as, as a result it can impact to understand your speaker so xenophones why particular these word why particular i selected this terminology in my presentation because we understand if we speak about general english so so the same problems in china like we have here so when we face chinese language so there are different versions of chinese language and chinese students from china they have be the part of our foreign students i would say maybe major part of our foreign uh, students who study in russia so and these students they have not only variety of chinese language as a native language but also they have variety of learning languages uh, we know that the classrooms in china can be up to 50 students and students say they don't communicate oral speaking practices so uh, because this mass class this big amount of people in the class doesn't give this opportunity to practice oral language or oral practices so and also in multilingual situations in prelingual situations it's also even more complicated because chinese language are being learned in context as an additional foreign languages. So, and I say like the second or as a foreign language about differences because there is difference because for them Russian language is a second language because they study this language in the environment of the native language. So, and that's why we have this opportunity to select the additional European language. And the system of the Chinese language as a native language, they has these serious phonetic difficulties, which is related to what I mean, multilinguality, multilingual in teaching. So, and we take this point of view in terms of linguistical point of view. So, I mean, if Chinese language has phonetical issues so that's why here for us it will be important to pay attention to this aspect for those who chinese language has as a native language for them it's different meaning as this form of distant learning of remote learning it even makes this problem more acute more difficult so the general mistakes of our students what kind of mistakes they do of course the incorrect stress of course we all know that even natives of russian or other languages can make even natives even professionals can make this kind of mistake like stress but especially if people come from regions and why they, they ask the foreign students they say why we study english language here in russia probably it's more logical when we come to the native country and study english there and here we say that here we study english language here as a language of intercultural communication you need this language in order to communicate with all world so the next issue articular articular problems so for example let's say a student knows how to pronounce this word properly but the peculiarity the specific phonetic of the student doesn't allow to properly pronounce a word 
So, for example, we had words when students simply were not able to read them. Not because they didn't have a transcription or whatever, because their articulative apparatus were not able to pronounce it. So, even in standard feedback, in spite of the fact that they had a lot of courses, a lot of hours, phonetic training, so they couldn't be able to pronounce properly. So that's why this phrase stress, I would say, I would name it some kind of experiment. Let's say we have an exercise and we ask a student to read phrases. So they make proper stress in terms of intonation, but as soon as they start speak, so, and they are slow speaking, so what I noticed, so it was not possible to understand what they're trying to say. So in exercise, they know how to say, how to pronounce, but as soon as it comes to the practice, they were not able to say properly. So that's what I noticed. So that's why this intonation aspect is important. So we see three stress, so which is underlines this picture of the phrase, melody of the speech, melody particularly. So, so like this typical intonation, proper intonation, melody, syntagism syntax structure in the English language. And of course, we have type of mistakes in grammar. So for example, let's say a student doesn't know some kind of grammar rule, of course, it can impact on the phonetic. So, and we made some kind of preventive measures, we, we made some kind of training exercises of transcription. But I would say that transcription not always help. Yes, it can help, let's say, in dictionary. And we know that every university has, like Oxford, Cambridge dictionary. And this type of dictionaries, they provide the transcription and voicing of transcription. And also the training of phonetics. It's not new approach, but what we learned that students are not ready to be trained. So, okay, you correct one time, you correct second time, but when the learner, when the student among the group can be shy, can have some kind of stress and it's some kind of stumbling block for this person. He doesn't feel comfortable if you always correct phonetics. So here on this slide, I just want to show you the lexical block, let's say, this is a medical terminology, medical terms. We had first block and the second block we added so to the particular illness, epidemic, and we added, let's say, more topical themes, which is more topical in terms of COVID-19 and prepositions. So we're using prepositions and building sentences. So. And these phonetic competences in speaking and discrete purposes. And let's say a flow communicative speech, because this, these two types are com communicative competences. So text, which I showed before, text. So the new words, and it was about 18 words. and. As a result, it was 15 correct answers. And then we had test to read these words with the small additions. And in the end, we checked it, the pronunciation, how it was topical according to this concept. And we added like, like new points which were needed for the next reading. So what was interesting, it was interesting to look at this thing and to understand this type of mistake. So for example, if they read the text and understand the text and understand 
because the links to the text, whether they will make again this mistake. So, and it's good that our educational system has these tests recorded. So for us, it's additional opportunity because we can start the record text and analyze them and improve them and find mistakes, analyze mistakes. So, and different texts can be taken, it can be medical texts, and we can use this recorded task, let's say a short text for a minute, and it's very convenient because you can stop at any second, any minute, as soon as you realize the mistake, you stop the text and you give recommendation to student and improve and work on this particular mistake. So, and the next one, it was interesting test, when they make a record of its own experience. What, how they understood, how they paced through pandemic, what happened with them, if they happened to be ill, how they recovering, what they felt. So, and they made this type of electronic presentation with their own experience, with their own feelings. So, and we divided group on different types. Let's say group A were the strongest one, B, this medium group with the restricted terminology, let's say for specific usage, like medical usage. Oh, I have two minutes only, two minutes left. Okay, it will be short and fast. So group B, let's say language and terminology for specific usage, let's say therapy. Etc. And these electronic presentations, they became much more better. So, and I skipped one slide, but I would like to pay attention to this slide. So, sayings. When we used sayings, it wasn't a good a tool. It wasn't a good tool for the adults because for them, because they needed to follow, let's say voice patterns in dictions. They needed to correct their speech, to check their speech in, in terms of phonetics. Because when we teach phonetics in speaking, sometimes it seems for a teacher that this is something like very important thing and necessary thing. But on another on another side in things we kill time, which we could use more efficiently in communication. So what we decided to do, we decided to do to create a special tools like mobile applications, and we considered several types of them, let's say for the specific purposes, mobile applications for specific purposes, because all our students use mobile phones, smartphones, and they always have smartphones with them. And that's why we decided to select mobile applications which have phonetics, transcriptions, voicing, and we have certain criteria to analyze this narrow, this specific electronic tools. So we needed the tools which could solve particular pedagogical tasks. And we have created a certain criteria and of course, when you look at Google Play, of course, we find about, let's say, 300 applications, but on iOS, you can find four of them. So, and the task, task of the teacher, how to select, to select the proper one. And it's not an easy task because you're a facilitator. And for you, it's important to find, to direct a student, to build a path, a learning pathway to motivate for the self-learning, to provide very good specialized tools for learning. And I'm going to show you an interesting table, table based on our analysis, what we've done. We have analyzed these voicing tools in general pronunciation. So let's say they type a word and they can find the analogy of a word. So I want to come back to my previous slide. It's important the functionality of this application because not all of the applications can provide voicing and recorded text. So visualization, 
because it's important to visualize the voice. So first of all, you can adjust faster, slower, whatever you need, whatever pace, space, space you need. And it's a very important functionality for the mobile application. And not every mobile application has this function. That's why, again, I underlined, you need a very thorough analysis when you select a mobile application for your student, which you can recommend as a tool for phonetic depends learning. OK, Google Play, you compare, and you pay attention to the certain functionalities. So, and from the beginning, we faced that, let's say, some applications were very good for the smartphones, for the iPhones, but they were not applicable for the iOS system. So, cross-functionality, it's always a very important factor. So, and the next, you can see in red, so there's applications in red, yeah, typically applicable for both platforms, Android and iOS. So they're good for two operational systems. So, and it can be a problem like to find such application. So what we think to do, we think that, let's say some student can use sentences on iOS and other part of the group can use let's say on their smartphone, very similar mobile application. So this our experiment, how it looks like, which we're going to continue to conduct. So, and this you can see description of our experiment. Again, I would like to underline, this is one of the part, and this is one of the conclusion of our experiment. So, and to my colleagues, participating in conference, but not in this section, on the other section. Thank you very much for your time, for your attention. So probably my report not, so not really weighted, not really, I would say, statistically important, but because I'm interested in communications, for me, very important that my listeners understand me. So I'm not interested in data, I'm interested in understanding. Thank you very much. And I would like, I would like your questions. Oh, Maria Yurevna. First of all, thank you very much for your presentation because it's not often the presentations related to phonetics and there are not many research in phonetics especially modern research. That's why it was very useful and interesting to listen to your report. So you mentioned that today, one of the tasks of the teaching is pronunciation. And I'm very glad that I found the person who, like me, is interested in this, because I'm sure and I think the same, that it's very important to pay attention to phonetics, to pronunciation, and it's not the right type. It's important in order to make communication understandable and clear and correct. So that's why I would like to tell you my warm words to express my own opinion and support you. Yes, and I agree with you because I met position like unless you pronounce it correctly, perfectly correctly. So you won't be able to be understood. And nowadays we can hear a variety of English language. When we have this huge amount of different types, varieties and audience speaking English is huge, even much more than we can expect. And of course, human error, human factor contributed to this, the phonetics of English language, because students are very motivated. Yes, we know the students are motivated. They want to learn. They want to know English. They want to communicate. They want to have high level. Uh, they want to possess proficiently. 
and that's why we will pay attention to phonetics to pronunciation how to build these competencies for our student we shouldn't ignore this because it improves their competences and improves the quality of speaker thank you very much thank you maria yurievna indeed it was very interesting and like we can use mobile applications in phonetic teaching. Could you please tell us, developers of such applications, how we can trust them, how they are experienced? Oh, yes, it's an interesting question, Polina Alexandrovna. So, Tatiana, it's your week. Yes, and a phonetic specialist. Yes, and we can build contacts because it will be very interesting for you and useful, by the way, to communicate and to share your experiences, to test the system, to test the mobile application. So I know some of the developers are professionals. So and then they had profession as the linguist and then they followed to business, then they started business. So and this applications they, i can say they are made by the specialist linguistic specialist who are working in business now so this is and by the way i forgot to mention one of the criteria this is the financial availability so it should be not very expensive otherwise we can face let's say problem that mobile applications they will not be good for the usage and not available. So that's why I believe it's very important. We need to study them first in terms of methodology, then linguistics, didactics, and usage. So, and to answer shortly, not all, all mobile applications can be trusted. Of course not. And this new trend to follow model applications in teaching tools, the result in the that we have plenty of them in the market so that's why for us it's important to select proper and correct one which we can use in our teaching tools so and we do have experience of selecting proper mobile applications yes i agree so we have aesthetic resources like let's say electronic dictionaries but like communicative form of dictionary and communicative approach between student and the dictionary so how i understand this i understand some part of job can be done outside of the frame of the lesson so, and now we can see a trend for the students to work independently and this cross test cross check student can do this cross checking and comment the assignments so and for teachers so teachers who develop methodology for them it's important to create a monitoring system how to how to check how to assess how to find so a couple of years ago i remember i spoke in one of the conferences and i just asked people to to put like so if you like or if you read my post please press like so i mean this is some kind of mechanism how to check so for example how many words were pronounced how it was pronounced melody, phonetics of saying, so some kind of checking tools. And another question is about understanding, because you mentioned, you mentioned understanding issue, because it's important, first of all, to understand in communication each other. So who will be estimate, who will assess this level of understanding oh very interesting thank you because yesterday we mentioned it because there is a trend now that a word speech a phrase it should be like recognizable so we mean that accents it's not the worst thing to do 
And by the way, we had great conference in St. Petersburg. I remember so it was a conference and it was a question from a student. Could you please tell us how I can get rid of my accent? And you know, and you, you know what was the answer from David? Are you a spy? Why do you want to get rid of your accent? You shouldn't. So accent, it's not the biggest crime. So everyone has a right to have his own accent. So this is the answer to a question. Should we get rid of our accent totally? Not of course. So let's say we speak in London, London cafe with my friend and we can be recognized as a Polish people. So it's some kind of accent how Londonese can recognize us. I don't think it's, a, it's not it's some kind of bad thing. What I think today important, and by the way, yesterday in, in seminar, I participated yesterday in seminar, and the question was, what do you think is a perspective in digital technologies development, interdisciplinary, individualization? I would say internationalism. So because this, the language will forget all aspects and become like international language. It's our common key in communication. It's something common which we build together. That's what I think very important. That's why I think we need common language. I would like a very small comment to add one comment. Paulina Alexandrovna, I would like to add who, your question, who assess? Who assess? Assess native speaker and not speaker, recipient. So, person who receives information, what Marina Yurimna meant. Nevertheless, what is interesting for me, so there's some kind of complex of skills and tools which can guarantee you to be, to be able that people understood you. So like the stress, phrases, intonation, volume, registered them. So all these speech characteristics. So some can believe that these characteristics can make speech understandable. Yes, of course, but not only these. So let's say intonation is excluded. And, and the picture is different, but we, we can't say that this that the speech is clear can be our target. So, because there is a complex of communicative, communicative skills. So, and understanding of speech can be done by different channels and it can be voice and can be mimic and can be just, and of course, including voice channel. So again, this, issue of understanding it's a complex issue it's a dialogue a monologue re register audience volume so all these moments all these nuances in the understanding yes and tatiana again i would like to add a small remark so I give you her contact and she's particularly working on this part what you mentioned so which mistakes in speaking communicative approach in teaching so, and she's like a founder in this issues and these nuances but i think in future in the future we will make a whole picture of this issue of course because a lot of things need should be included should be included of course we wish you success alina alexandrovna i just thought you want another question to ask and i'm just speculating like communication understanding how to understand was the intonation, comprehensive, 
правило, да, они существуют, но вопрос все равно он от, от, открытый достаточно, как регистрироваться. But the topic of our discussion and conference is the digital technologies in foreign language teaching. So in a new system. According... Okay, the meaning is that, first of all, the challenges of new reality. Here is the new reality and it is here and we are using language in a intercultural, intercultural communication and uh, Lyudmila uh, started uh, her report about te how to teach a foreign language and that everything changed and that uh, uh, we are now teaching in a, a remote format and we uh, were basically faced with a problem and we had to solve it uh, like on the spot immediately to address the challenges uh, we found uh, faced with and uh, Lyudmila Georgina also uh, made a great report uh, about how technologies are changing this stuff. Now, uh, how uh, a triangle turned into a tetrahedron. So you see there were very serious reports, great in-depth reports uh, by our colleague, uh, by Stella. It was a, Stella had a stellar report. So it was uh, amazing. It was very in-depth and we understand that all these strategies, all these syndromes are there, these coping strategies, all of these things are helping us to overcome the obstacles that are in front of us. And we're talking about linguistics and uh, language didactics. And of course, uh, all of our students are as well affected by all of this. So uh, all the reports were very interested as far as dictionaries go. and. Uh, uh, you have my total respect because you, your approach is very, very serious, very, very scientific. It's very in-depth and uh, the presentations were very detailed. So it was uh, uh, very impressive, in fact. Uh, as far as the French language goes, it, it was also great. And this, this, we had this, this ongoing discussion right in the process of it all, in the middle of it all. So, uh, if you have any further comments, uh, please feel feel free. Feel free. So, uh, I would like to thank uh, Maria Yurina, the head of our section. Uh, everything was logically connected. Everything was really interesting, and we had a uh, very finished and completed section here, a complete section. So, of course, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much to our chair of the section. Uh, thank you very much for uh, conducting it and organizing it and managing it. Thank you, everyone, for your questions. Thank you for your feedback. And uh, I will also gladly take part in uh, the next conference because all the reports were very well founded and very solid and it will be very interesting to read all of this in the article form when, once they are published so i would like to wish you every success uh, in the conference to all of our participants and uh, all of you and, and i would like also to say something uh, concerning in uh, in the harlamica her report was great for us we're, we're not just uh, theoretical uh, linguists, we, are also pr we also practice the language and it was very important for us because uh, the exams uh, are ahead of us. Uh, please, would you be so kind as to tell us, uh, are we going, uh, is, is our section going to be available uh, in a recorded format? Yes, uh, the recording, the, the, the recording, uh, the conference uh, is being recorded and I think that we, you will be notified later on where you can find it. So will this conference have any any sort of a compendium compendium or something like I don't have uh, any such information right now. So I think the uh, organizational committee will actually uh, contact all of you. I would like to thank you all and the the uh, this week I took part in three conferences, so uh, I know what I'm. Some, uh, some, 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 sometimes I'm just forgetting where where I was, where I wasn't. So, 
where I need to present a report and where I don't need to do it. So, but I would like to, anyway, I would like to say that uh, the level of the speakers, uh, it has increased greatly because there, there, there were some, uh, some cases when, okay, this is boring, this is trivial, this is not interesting. And uh, here I see that uh, the organizers of the conference are actually selecting the speakers in a more strict manner, or the general level of uh, the speakers has increased, or maybe these new technologies are actually making people uh, work on themselves and on their further self-development. And I would like to uh, underline the high level of this conference with high satisfaction. It's, it's great to just stay in touch with you, to cooperate with you and to learn from you all. And I would like to ask, uh, I'd like to ask Makarevich, Tatiana, and Irina, you, are you from uh, practical linguistics, from uh, applied linguistics? Are you teachers? One second. You know, we have two, two educations. We have linguistic education and uh, our second education. We uh, finished this. Uh, this uh, our second education lies in the field of the management of informational resources so, and it's it's great I, I would like to continue uh, our cooperation and we have contacts yes so yes we, we will happily share them with every one of you thank you very much because i'm the head of a, an, a institute of uh, 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 linguistic and pedagogical education. We're going to further develop uh, the artificial intelligence field. So I'm very much interested in uh, uh, staying in touch with you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, please receive the assurances of my uh, admiration and your of your qualification. And thank you very much to the chair of the current uh, section because uh, she, she knows everyone. She even knows Tishanov and not everyone knows him. Yes, and we have an online course, so thank you very much. Uh, it seems that we are working in the same direction, okay. You see, so I think that this, this uh, cross-conference was very uh, good. Thank you very much for such a productive work. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. So, and, and I think... Uh, it's time. It's it's. I think it's time to wrap it up. Okay. Okay. It's very good that we we are having this. Uh, we had this lively discussion. We have these uh, lively transitions between all the reports. Thank you very much. Despite this remote format, so thank you very much, and thank you very much, and uh, have a successful completion of the conference. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.